Good morning again to everyone. I want to share a few thoughts today on our story from the Old Testament. It's interesting how we how we talk about similar things that are related. You know, we talked about chastisement, correction, discipline earlier this morning. Bible study and and there's a, a lot of that in our scripture that we read already this morning. How God sent his messenger the prophet to bring judgment upon Eli. But there's a little more to the story and we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to share with you a little bit of background on the book of First Samuel and uh, I'm just going to read it to you out of out of my Bible it's, I think it's pretty good it says first and second Samuel are named after the person God used to establish kingship in Israel Samuel not only anointed both King Saul and King David but he also gave definition to the new order of God's rule over Israel and began with the incorporation of kingship into its structure. Samuel's importance as God's representative in this period of Israel's history is close to that of Moses, since he, more than any other person, provided for covenant continuity in the transition from the rule of the judges to that of the monarchy. First and Second Samuel were originally one book. It was divided into two points, two parts by the translators of the Greek Septuagint, and then continued on with the Latin Vulgate. First names were the First and Second Book of Kingdoms, and the First and Second Kings. Interestingly enough, and then it was later settled on First and Second Samuel in the Hebrew tradition in the versions that we currently read today. Our story uh, that we read earlier was uh, about 1300 B.C. So that's about 3,100 years ago, 3,100 years ago. You know, talking about the priest Eli of course he was born out of the, the house of the tribe of Levi as the priest appointed to serve him in the tabernacle and later in the temple we read the prophet came to, to Eli and, and relayed him God's judgment on his life for the evil that were that was being done by his sons. Scripture says that the sons were doing contemptible sins. In other words, they were blaspheming God by stealing from him. They had no re regard for the Lord. They were very selfish and very self-centered men. It was all about them. That's not what the role of a priest or a pastor or a preacher is supposed to be. But Eli came under judgment as a father because he failed to restrain them. He looked the other way and by doing that basically condoned it. We see that far too often in the world today. How parents think their children can do no wrong. 
It's not just a tragedy of today. We see it was the same thing was happening 3,100 years ago. Just in my opinion, by their actions and Eli's inaction brought God's judgment and correction on themselves. Now I want to share with you scripture that carries on from, from where we stopped, 1 Samuel chapter 3. The real subject of our message this morning is about Samuel. Starting verse 1, chapter 3, it says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, Eli. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. Eli, you called me? Eli answered, it says, My son, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. Eli, you called me? Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say this, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and laid in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling, as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it to tingle. At that time I will carry out Against Eli, everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Now on the surface, I think a lot of emotions in play here. At first, I really felt bad for Eli and his sons. I thought, what a tragedy, a judgment that God has placed on them. And then you have Samuel, a young man. Many think he was about 12 years old. Or some think that he was a little bit older. But basically he's a young man, a teenager. Here's Samuel being called on by God. What an awesome experience that must have been. See, there was Samuel lying in the temple. The same place where 
the Ark of the Covenant was. What a powerful place that must have been. God calls Samuel, and he immediately gets up and he runs to Eli because obviously Eli is the only one who could be talking to him. Probably the only one there. Didn't really understand what was happening to him. And we see that this happens three times. And each time Samuel gets up and he goes to Eli. and It's not until the third time that Eli finally figures it out of what's going on here. This must be the Lord calling to Samuel. So we know that Eli told him to go back and, and, and say those words to God. Now I don't know exactly what I would have said. I would have probably been too terrified to say anything. But Samuel does exactly as Eli tells him. When God calls his name a fourth time, he answers appropriately. And he says, God, please speak to me. I'm here. And I'm listening. And we read where God goes on to, to verify the judgment, to reiterate the same passing of judgment that the prophet had told Eli in the previous chapter that we read in the scripture reading time. That Eli had failed to uphold his office and his responsibility as a father and allowed sin to run rampant in the face of God. But I want to concentrate and just there's a lot that we've covered here this morning but it's just a, a, a simple little fact. And it's in verse 10. I'll read it to you again. It says, The Lord came and stood there calling as the other three times. He says, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel responded saying, Speak, for your servant is listening. Now, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I've said this many times, but I'm just a, a simple man. You know, there's a lot of things that we could talk about regarding this scripture today. But I want to focus on one specific aspect of this scripture today. And that's about listening to God. When you stop and think about that concept, we would all readily admit that we would be eager and willing and ready to hear when God speaks to us. I don't think that we would blow God off or ignore Him. I've told you before that Mary Jean gets mad at me when she says something to me and I'm watching TV and I don't really hear both of them. She thinks I'm ignoring them. Really, I'm just thinking about the TV and I don't really hear. And, but I believe if God spoke to me while I was watching TV, I think I'd just turn the TV off right away. I think he'd have my attention. And I think we would all admit that, that we were all ready to hear that. All right, God, I'm ready. Speak to me now. I want to hear it. 
But you know, unfortunately, that's not the way that it works. In our lives, we have to work at it. It's not like between 9.55 and 10 o'clock at night, we can sit down in our bed, close our eyes, and say, okay, God, speak to me now. After you finish a few minutes of prayers that you've offered to it. That's not the way God works. He doesn't speak to us on our command or our demands. God speaks to us on his timetable. And I would think that probably I am probably most guilty of not taking the time to set aside in my life to allow God to speak to me. See, I am guilty of, from the minute my mind turns on in the morning to the last minute before I go to sleep, after I put my CPAP machine on in bed at night, my mind is always in gear. It's always working. It's always thinking about something. Whether it's church or work or family or sports, whatever it may be. Politics. There's always something going on. And something else I've been convicted of is that God is not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you a little bit. Can you put aside that other stuff in your life? He's not going to ask quietly. He's not going to force his way in. But he will come in and he will speak to us and he will reveal himself to us when he's invited. When is the last time we invited God into our mind, into our heart to speak to us? Psalms tells us that we are to be still and know that he is God. Man, I love that scripture. It was quoted to me by Uh, A man named Jim Foreman. You've seen Jim out here playing with Don and his group. And I think he played the the bass. And he's just a a great man. I can remember walking down the hall at Christ Central Church. And I think you could see the hurriedness in my face. And anxiety of something was going on. And he just stopped me and put his hand on my arm. And he said, Joe... He said, be still and know that there's God. He said, you need to slow down. I just came out of nowhere. He just said that. But you know, that's so true. We all need to take more time. You know, we talk about quiet time. We talk about setting aside time for God. But I think that we all, and I am the Number one culprit of that. I think we all need to take a little bit more time to set aside for God. Allow Him that time to speak to us. We need to turn our mind off. We need to turn our TV off. We need to turn our computer off. We need to turn our phone off. Turn the lights off. And just allow God time to speak to us. There are people that will say today that God doesn't speak to people anymore. Well, I would disagree with them because I think he does. And they'll say, well, you know, you just don't hear about it as much anymore as you used to. It used to happen pretty regularly in the Bible. And my response is, and my philosophy is, is that God is still talking. The problem is, is we're just not listening. And it's something we've got to work at. We've got to be intentional about it. We can't just close our eyes and and fold our hands and and sit there for, for three minutes and expect God to just 
come walking into the room and talk to us just like that. It might take five minutes. It might take 30 minutes. It might take an hour. It might take an hour and a half. And it might take doing that every day for a year. I know that's kind of hard to take. Who wants to sit there and quiet and wait for God an hour and a half a day for a year? Well, maybe that's what it takes. I don't know God's schedule. But it's all about a condition of the heart. And I guess it all comes down to, do we really want to hear from God? It's real easy to say that. Because if I asked that question to every person here, we would all respond in the affirmative, absolutely, preacher, we want to hear from God. And the next question I would ask, and I'd ask the same thing to myself, what are we doing? To facilitate God and allow Him to speak to us. Are we setting aside enough time? Do we have a real genuine desire in our hearts to have Him speak to us? See, I believe that Samuel did. Even though he was young and he didn't really understand it, God knew the desires of his heart. God knew that he needed Samuel down the road but I think Samuel was a willing participant my question today for us is are we willing are we willing to do what it takes to listen to God it's a big commitment I trust that we would consider this And in the days ahead, allow God more time in our lives to speak to us. If you would, let's bow our heads. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom in the scriptures of the Old Testament. Lord, the There's so much there from which we can learn. Lord, my prayer today is that for each one of us, within the sound of my voice, Lord, that we would be intentional about about allowing more time for you to speak to us, to open our minds, open our hearts, that we might hear your guidance for our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.